To all who need comfort. To all who need friendship. To all who are lonely and need companionship. To all who need sheltering love. To all who sin and need a savior. John Gray Memorial Church opens wide its doors and in the name of the Lord says, Welcome. 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 Welcome to our John Gray Memorial Church family. We are glad that you have connected with us today. Come, all you people, come and worship. God has made a covenant with us. Come, all creatures of the earth, come and worship. God has made a covenant with all creatures. Remember the covenant and be thankful. God remembers the covenant and God will save us. Come, let us worship together.
to the mountain top. Help us to look forward to where you would have us go. Help us to listen carefully to the words of your healing love. Open our hearts and spirits to receive your glorious direction. Lord, we have come to this moment to give our lives to you. Amen. 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 Let us pray. The works of our hands are gifts of your mercy, O God, and everything we have is a sign of your love. If we have strength, it is because you uplift us. When we have joy, it is on account of your grace. We praise you when you comfort us. We are afraid you judge us in anger. With Christ to intercede, accept now our worship. May it be worthy of the care you show us. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer of confession. Lover of justice, distinctions become blurred when we are called on to serve you. We have been taught that to serve you is to obey you. At times, fidelity to others gets in our way. Societal pressures appeal to that sense of security that speaks to our welfare. Mores and customs become mandates. Higher loyalties are put aside. We confess our mixed allegiance. Have mercy upon us as we face obligations and reclaim us from error when we do not obey your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
The scripture reading is taken from 2 Kings 2, verse 1 to 12. 2 Kings 2, verse 1 to 12. When the Lord was about to take Elijah to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied. So be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied. So be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at the distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha stopped at the Jordan. Elisha took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet, if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours otherwise it will not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elijah saw this and cried out, my father, my father, the chariot and the horsemen of Israel. And Elijah saw him no more. Then he took hold of his garment and tore it in two. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's Bible text is taken from Mark chapter 9 verses 2 to 9. After six days Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain. They were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Finding myself at a loss for words And the funny thing is, it's okay The last thing I need is to be heard But to hear what you would say God speak. 
Good morning, everyone. It is good that we can gather together once again to share in this uh, very special occasion. Today, it is a Sunday we recognize as Transfiguration Sunday. And uh, one thing that we celebrate today is Valentine's. And uh, we know that a lot of people are today looking for gifts, presents, and more so. Uh, companionship, you know, being with your uh, loved ones. So as we gather today, we pray that, you know, what we will share with you will uh, help you to see beyond the way that you used to see things. In addition to that, we have with us uh, today, Mr. Uh, Adam Jackson, who is uh, with us, going to be sharing with us, and then also his wife, uh, Mrs. Martha Jackson, and it is good to have you and we welcome you as we come to share together. As we speak uh, today, it is uh, Transfiguration Sunday and Valentine's, and uh, we look at two scriptures: the Second King chapter two, uh, verse one, to, uh, verse two to twelve, and also we look at uh, Saint Mark chapter nine, verse two to nine. And uh, these are the two scripture lessons that we will focus on and briefly, but mainly we want to uh, inject the word love. And, and uh, as we inject it in our theme is uh, love that transformed. So we will um, share together today uh, about this love that transformed. And uh, I believe it will be a very good experience uh, for each of us. So today is Transfiguration Sunday, as well as uh, people around the world are celebrating Valentine's Day. As we see the concept of transfiguration, we see movement, we see transformation. And that transformation is a radical change that occurs in our inner being, in our character, and also our condition. So, Change is what we believe we need for us to be transformed. Second King chapter 2, we see that Elijah was transformed and taken up to heaven. And in Mark chapter 9, Jesus was transformed. The Bible speaks of transfiguration as a display of God's glory in the person's of his son, Jesus Christ. It is hard to imagine what Jesus looked like when he was transformed or when he was changed. In Mark, we see this account where Jesus face becoming bright like the sun and his clothes being dazzling white. As we see it in Mark, we saw also that a cloud overshadows Jesus during his transfiguration. So as we look at it, we see that this has a symbolic aspect to it and also a historical aspect. For me, I look at it and it's a significance. As we see that God and Christ shows himself, not only in this transfiguration, but during that moment, we saw that God spoke in the cloud. We can also see one of the, in one of the appearance of God to Moses on Mount Sinai, when God spoke from a cloud. At the same time, it is a symbol of the second coming of Christ. In 2 Peter chapter 1, God gave him honor, gave Jesus honor and glory. So the transfiguration concludes with God's voice speaking from the cloud, which mark God's presence. So the disciples heard that, and they were so happy when God spoke in the cloud and said, This is my beloved 
son. This is my chosen one with whom I am well pleased. This part of it for me relates directly to Valentine's. As we, as we said, God shows his love in Christ and through Christ we are loved and it is so important. So as the disciples heard that, they were so happy hearing God talking about Jesus. And so I look at it in our social interaction, how we show our love for each other, how we show our love for people, our loved ones. That for me was God's demonstration of his love for Jesus. There was what we call intimacy within that, if you ponder so much onto it. There was a direct connection between God, Jesus, so in our social context, and as believers, as we look at it, we saw the change, the transformation that occurs. So as we know that today is transfiguration and it's Valentine's, one of the things that I captured from the scripture, and also, as I think of Valentine's, it is the questions that are before us. And one of them is that, as we saw the change, the transformation that occurs, do you believe, as you come to share with us, do you believe love changes us? Well, first off, yes, I would believe that. I uh, strongly believe that, actually. When you come to feel loved by someone or you love someone, there's a lot of changes that you are almost inspired to make um, so that both of you can, or your love for that person can grow more and also you can be loved by that person more. That is so well. true. That is so true. That is so true. Mm -hmm. And it, it depends on how it is being shared, you know? Mm -hmm. I think love changes you also because when you love someone, um, you put their needs first. You think about them as well. So it's you're not as selfish when you think of the other person. So it changes the choices that you make, the way that you act. Um, and so, yeah, but it changes you in a good way. Yeah, I, I'm glad that you mentioned this because that brings us to the second question mm -hmm. uh, that we were to ask. Do you believe people should change themselves to find love. So that, that I think, you know, enter into the whole yeah. context. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that? I got ladies for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't think so. I think that you should be yourself. That's when you have the truest love, when you could be exactly who you are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you find someone and they love you for that. And that's also, um, when you're yourself, you don't change, then you're the most comfortable in that relationship and it's very genuine and just authentic. But I do believe that you could aspire to become a better person. So I think there could be change involved. I don't think you should have to change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in, some, in, in more or less positive ways, I agree. Um, you know, being, being the person that you've grown up to be or you, you are is who you would want someone to fall in love with um there may be in from my point there may be a few things that you could possibly spot about yourself that may not favor um someone or may not favor um the general public or whatever and you might say that well you know if i didn't really do that anymore then possibly it would make myself a lot easier to get along with so sometimes you you know, it's po sometimes it's possible that a person can change for love, but originally you you want to be loved for the person who you are. So yeah, yeah. yeah I do yes. agree with that because you mm -hmm. could yeah. aspire to be better. Yeah, yes. you can aspire. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, That that's definitely that's exactly what it is about because mm -hmm. if uh, you know there there's some question here I think that we relate to it later on, but um, if if you if you if you're going to change to find love, uh, 
Mm-hmm. Then at the end of the day, when you find it, you might go back to where you were. Mm-hmm. And therefore, by having love and then love changes you, which was yeah. the first question, mm-hmm. yeah. it, it's, it's the best way, the best way that, right. that it, should, it should go. Mm-hmm. So that, that brings us to the third question. Do you think once you love someone, you will always love them? Or do you think love can fade, with, fade away with time? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what, what, what do you think about that? So I actually think love can fade away, but only if you put things that can cause that to happen, such as infidelity or um, not spending quality time, you just drift apart. I think things like that could cause that. But I think that in a good relationship, you should actually strive to make your love grow. Mm-hmm. And I know that's definitely how it's been for us. We always say it that like we love each other more than we did when we first got married. Mm-hmm. Um, that's because... You know, the more time you spend with someone, the closer you become, the more experiences you share, and our love just grows. That, that's, that's so, do you know what is so good about this discussion? It is coming from the heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not something that you're making up, and it's right. just coming from the heart, mm-hmm. and it's your personal experience that you're sharing. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so grateful to, to have you all, you know, Thank sharing you. with us uh, at, Thank this, you. at this time. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah, you want to say something about this? Or? Um, I mean, most, most of my thoughts would generally <laughs> agree with my wife. <laughs> but most of my thoughts will generally agree with Martha's. Um, again, I think that once you are, once you have developed a relationship with someone, um, like everything else in life, it you you need to work on that mm-hmm. to keep it alive and to keep it there and to keep it growing. And like she said, the more experiences you and that person share together, the more challenges you go through together the more um harder times or good times that you face together the more your love grows yes for each other yes yes that is true the more time that you spend the stronger you get yeah and and this is so true in our relationship with god as well Mm -hmm. the more time that we spend with god and the the more we get to love god Mm -hmm. And the more we want to stay closer. And, mm-hmm. and it is the same um, when you were asking about fading away too. Yeah. Just as our relationship with one another, if we were not to make the time or spend the time or be in, make the efforts to create that bond or to create that relationship, then we would, we would fade away as well as it would be with your relationship with God too. If you ignore or keep saying, oh yeah, you'll do this later. It'll just keep growing and growing until one day it's more or less non-existent. That's so. true, that's true. And in addition to that, one of the things, especially as we speak, and you're a couple, and mm-hmm. you know, um, as we speak, um, when, when there are secrets that, is ke- uh, that, that are kept mm-hmm. and, and there is no uh, sharing, Mm-hmm. You know, and, and there is no reliance on mm-hmm. each other. Mm-hmm. That also can cause the love to fade away. So yeah. it, it's, a, it's, it's very important. What one thing about love that scares you? Ooh. But maybe, maybe, maybe I should probably say something about it before you even, even start. Yes. I, I wonder if there is something that can scare me when it comes to love. Mm-hmm. I wonder... No, that is my personal opinion, you know, mm-hmm. in that. But uh, there are many things that, you know, that can scare us. And, yes. you know, but I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just thinking if there is something that can scare me. Maybe if my love would run away from me or something yeah. like that. <laughs> but, I mean, it just, what, what do you think? What do you think? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, before Adam... I probably would have given you many answers, but that's because I was never with the right person. And once I met Adam, there's nothing really that scares me. The only thing, and this is the thing that popped into my head, I'm scared of, because obviously death is a part of life, and I'm scared of that moment and the pain that I feel. So, you know, with love, when you lose someone that you love, then Mm -hmm. you feel the other side of it. So that's the only thing. Yeah, yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. My, my contribution would be the same. Um, yeah. <laughs> he's answering all the questions for yeah. me right now. But okay. my contribution would be the same. Like, you grow so deeply in love with 
that person and you are so deeply connected with them and you do you stay so throughout the whole phase of life mm -hmm. and as she said death is a part of everyone's life everyone it, it will happen it's an ine inevitable yeah, inevitable thing. things yeah inevitable, yeah definitely thing. definitely that but you never know when it when god is going to call you home you mm -hmm. never know yeah. and for that mo that would be the thing that scared me you know yeah. if my if her time or my time came earlier than anyone expected, that would be the absolute thing that would fear yeah. that I would fear about yeah. I, I think you 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 mm. you both are right in that because mm. I, I I was thinking of it but I said, you know, what would that be? Mm. You know, but I'm glad that you answer it. Um what do you think should love always be or always feel comfortable? Or should love always feel new and exciting? What do you think? It is uh, how how you think love should be as as we look at it? Especially you guys are, you know, um, young. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, what do you think? We're, we're, well, some of the longer married folk may say we're still new, but um, for me, I think love should be both comfortable and something new at some point in time as well. Um, not new in a sense that you have to wonder what are you going to do to impress this, to impress your wife or to impress your spouse or your loved one. Just in the fact that you're you're looking into keeping things alive. Uh, okay, you're looking to keeping things alive, yeah. but you want to do that comfortably. You don't want to make it awkward. You don't want to make it feel awkward as well. Yeah, um, because once it starts to feel awkward, then it starts to feel like a task. It's mm -hmm. not. It's not a task that you're trying to do. It's actually. It's come. It should be coming from deep within within your heart. Yeah. So anything done from deep within the heart, most of the time, you should feel comfortable about doing yeah. it. Yeah. So, that's yeah. Yeah. more or less where I would go with that. Yeah. That's that's his. That is great. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, I, I can add or inject something into it that, mm -hmm. you know, when we look at love, love uh, for me, as I see it, it is not always comfortable in a context. Uh, it should be comfortable, mm -hmm. but it, it is not always comfortable. Yeah, because I, I look at it in the context of, you know, sometimes, well, not sometimes, probably most of the time, mm -hmm. you have to compromise. Things oh, yeah. that, That's you know, true. your spouse, That's you true. know, is doing that it is a good thing, but you yourself, it's not something that you would do. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> you have to compromise in yeah. order to accept, That's you know, true. accepting one another. That's and true. that even when you don't feel comfortable, right. but there is that connection within, mm. you know. <laughs> there is that connection you know so so um it, it is hard it's not easy because sometimes you know when we look at love especially when we are uh, at a point where we are not sure of everything mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes we want it to be you know just as we want it mm -hmm. but it can for me personally i find it that it, it cannot be the same all the time right you know it can't be the same all the time and therefore right. it sometimes may be comfortable and sometimes may, Maybe it not. may not be right. comfortable what do you think that's fair. yeah that's actually a good way to put it that there could be phases mm -hmm. where you're in a comfortable phase um and i also agreed a little bit with what he said that mm -hmm. you have a little bit of both i think every couple is different too i think some couples thrive and just you know in the comfortable part mm -hmm. some couples love to just keep it fresh and exciting so it just depends um but yeah, a little bit of comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but again, again, and adding to that, if we go back into the Bible, the love mm -hmm. of God for Christ, mm -hmm. and when you look at the love of Christ for us, it mm -hmm. was not a comfortable thing. That's yeah. true. That's true. You know, mm -hmm. you know, just thinking he knew about the cross. Mm -hmm going to carry our sins yeah so that was not a comfortable thing no, you remember the prayer true. that he he that's had true. you know and drop of blood was yeah. running like sweat mm. you know mm -hmm. so and just one last thing i was gonna think that i was wanting to to get her to see it to get her have a chance to say it but i would think um looking at the uncomfortable side if you take for example martha and myself um, and you too, Reverend Sally. She has come from somewhere else that she called home. Yeah. 
Um, so it had to be terribly uncomfortable and probably still is sometimes for her to come from that comfort zone to a new place, to the fresh start, fresh everything, to settle here, to, to live here with someone that she loves. So I'm thinking, or I know I, sh- I should say, that that in itself would have been uncomfortable, but she did it because the love for for me, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Great sacrifice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's a lot of things we could ask, especially right. for this day today. But we, right. we, um, let, let me just ask this uh, particular question. What do you think is the most important factor of keeping love alive in a relationship? Oh, that's a good question. What do you think is the most important factor? I don't think there's one individual important fact. I think there's like several of them. Mm-hmm. Some of the most important for me would be, well, the, like, you know, um, you're trusting in yeah. each other, yeah. truthful with each other. And you always try, try to understand each yeah. other. <laughs> always try to understand each other. Uh, when you're not trying to look at things just from one side which would be your own perspective but you're also hope you're also trying to gather the understanding from your spouses or your loved ones perspective as well but there's trust honesty and yeah you can add into of course um, yeah like you mentioned before not keeping secrets yeah. mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. you're when you're married your relationship is different because you're now one and so you have to act like that and think that way too mm-hmm. so you know when you go through something you're going through it together mm-hmm. um yeah and just no secrets be open yeah it, it's, it's very very it is very important because you need to find ways and means to rekindle that love mm-hmm. right. you know to 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 make sure that that love is always inspiring mm-hmm. and even in the most difficult time we're talking about being comfortable thing mm-hmm. uh, yeah that mm-hmm. part of it mm-hmm. even when you don't feel comfortable right. you have a uh, you have a responsibility right. mm-hmm. to keep that love alive right and to keep it alive is to find out what is in my partner that i know my partner mm-hmm. loves so much mm-hmm. and i need to make sure that is that thing is that when something happened maybe Coming from work or mm. something happened, we have a little discussion and one get mad with each other. Mm. Come on, this mm. happened all the time. Mm. But at the end of the day, we need to, it's like tongue and teeth, you know? Yeah. We have to live there together, yeah. Yeah. you know? So yeah. we need to come back to, to that particular place where mm. we can say to each other, you know what? This happened. Right. Maybe it's time to say, you know, I'm sorry. Mm. Oh, yeah. Maybe that is the thing. You know, say I'm sorry, or from I I I would say this maybe, you know, just come from work. Let me take your shoes off and put some warm water and wash your yeah. foot for you and, and you massage it, it or something. Are you giving yeah. her good ideas, no? <laughs> <laughs> but I I think it is something like that. You yes. know, just do something in <laughs> yes. order to make sure that you can keep that love alive. Yes. Yeah, I, I mean, as young. As young couple, from your experience so far, mm-hmm. what would you teach us, you know, uh, um, uh, about, about love? Oh, what would we teach her? What would we teach about love? <laughs> well, it, it would, for me, it would, be, it would relate to a lot of the questions that we asked earlier mm-hmm. um, about keeping love alive, keeping love fresh, being in comfort, being in your comfort zone, but then also going out of your comfort zone as well. Um, Compromises is really a big part of it, of course. Um, And, and yeah, just keeping your love for each other as alive and in, alive and in the spirit as possible, Mm -hmm. basically. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I think I think I think this is the main thing. But a last question that I'm going to ask, and we're going to end it there. What is the craziest thing? Because that is the most important question for me. One well, one of the most important questions. What is the craziest thing you would do for love? Well, like he mentioned, the craziest things that I actually have done is move here. Um, but thinking about it. I want to say almost what's the craziest thing you wouldn't do for love because mm-hmm. we would do almost anything for each other. That is very mm-hmm. true. 
That is very true. And I think I, that summarizes my answer pretty well. <laughs> and, you know, the, what the, the best thing or craziest thing um, would, would, be, would be for me to do the reciprocate of what she did. Mm -hmm. Leave everything I have here and go and live in another country with her. So mm -hmm. I would do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I, I want to say thank you to you all for your, uh, your sharing. And uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's very important to see you as a young couple coming to uh, share <laughs> with us. And, and it's very important to me. And I know it's very important to those who are listening. And therefore, I believe that love can change anyone only if it is received. Love can change anyone only if it is received. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Whosoever believes in him, in other words, whosoever receive him will not perish but have everlasting life. So in a relationship, love is not always comfortable. It can be scary. And at the same time, it can be kept alive if it is shared. As God demonstrated his love for Jesus and Jesus demonstrated his love for us, let us do the same and be crazy for each other and love. Let us pray. Great and giving God, we thank you that you revealed your glory and presence in the person of your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ. Thank you for allowing us to grasp glimpses of your splendor and to embrace moments of your beauty in our lives. Lord of infinite mercy, we confess that, we were, that were we in the place of the disciples, we too would want to make a Broadway production of the Transfiguration event, because we would not take the time to understand its significance for our lives. We are in such a hurry to memorialize everything that the power and meaning of the event becomes pale or altered in our memories. Help us look at Jesus with new eyes, those eyes that see him in light of the witness of the ages, eyes that see Jesus as the one who comes to set people free, to heal, to bring hope and peace. Make us ready to become faithful disciples, rather than remaining dazzled by the mountaintop experience. Give us strength and courage this day to witness to Jesus' love by the many deeds of mercy and justice we can offer in his name. For we offer ourselves, imperfect but willing to serve. O oh God, as your Son drew apart to be in prayer with you, we offer our prayers for the transformation of the world and the Church. We pray for our sisters and brothers across the world who still live with the reality of COVID-19. Please grant healing to those affected, comfort and peace to their concerned family members, compassion and wisdom to their caregivers, and direction to those responsible for administering the response. We lift up those who are without, without food, adequate water and shelter, without good health, without companionship and hope. Assure them of your presence and comfort as, your, as you empower us, your people, to be agents of your love, help and healing. We remember now those people of whom we are aware for whom we are concerned, and for whom we pray, calling their names in our hearts in this moment. In receiving our prayers, reveal the glory and presence of your Spirit alive in the world today. Free us from all doubts, and empower us to act as a transfigured people. We pray these things with thanks, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my 
Let me be as Christ to you. 